All right, hello and welcome to the Legacy Crusaders YouTube channel. This is Benji, and today I'm joined by Desperate Oak. Say what up, Oak. Hello. So Oak is another smaller Yugi tuber like myself. We are going to try and help Oak get a little bit better with their Unchained deck. So this new series, what I do is I bring someone on who believes they have some room for growth and maybe just Yu-Gi-Oh theory, some deck building, and things like that. Nothing specific because uh, I'm not picking people who play decks I play. So Oak said I could use getting a little bit better. So I'm going to try and act as like a bit of a coach here. Uh, we're going to play some games on YGO Pro. I'm going to try and uh, let Oak tell me what to do. I'm going to try and suggest other play lines. Maybe we'll make some adjustments to the deck list in the long run. Uh, today we are on Unchained. Oak, do you feel your list is pretty normal comparatively to standard lists? Or is there anything that's different that might be worth pointing out in advance? Or why you might have made some choices? I, I know most lists run one dog. But what ends up happening with me is I'll get late into the game and need to get a dog out but have no way to recur it late game so i run two dog and then i run in extra uh, in avarice in the main deck and one in the side because again if i have no way to recur with unchained monsters i can quickly normally if i get super late game i will have drawn into pot of avarice and just kind of recur resources a little better for uh, the grind game Okay, I, I as far as I know, Avarice does not generally see play in these decks. I don't know if that's from your experience, what you've seen when looking up lists? Not particularly. All right, so that's something I don't usually see. I'm not sure if I see people on Gamma. I feel like I see people usually more on, like, Trap Trick, mm -hmm. things like that. The Usually the three extravagances are in the main deck, as far as I know. Yes. Uh, you do have a slightly odd list, is all I'm mostly saying here. I see you have the extravagant sideboard, but, uh, like, there are cards that aren't here that I would expect to be here. Now, this could be just budgetary, I have no idea. Access Code Talker, thoughts on that? Access Code Talker is a budgetary restriction. Okay, so obviously we're going to play, uh, you know, the whole point is to get you better. So playing cards mm -hmm. you can't uh, necessarily have access to wouldn't make sense for the sake of what we're doing here. Obviously, that's a easy suggestion. I'm sure you're aware of that. Mm -hmm. All right, so uh, another interesting card here is this Fury of Kairushin, which to me would probably be a place for us to put in the ec the Extravagance, just to have all the Extravagances in the deck if we were to go that route. My quick question is, do you find this card useful in your own experience? It it helps search Torrential Tribute, which, you know, will pop all monsters on the field and then get all of your Unchained Floating Effects. Fury of the Kairushin is definitely something that can be cut. There's been one singular moment where it was, both effects were useful, other than that, it just searches Torrential. All right, so I would like to cut that for the extravagance for today, if that's all right. All right. All right, so just a couple of minor changes I'd like to try and do in advance. I'm not sure people even play Whaling. If they do, I feel like they usually play it as a one-of. I don't know, have you yes. looked at some other lists? Is that pretty common to see this card? Yes. I feel like I've never seen this card. Yeah, people normally just run it at one. All right, so I'm going to cut one for the third extravagance for now. Okay. Just because, uh, again... Uh, I'm, I'd usually I would play out the list the way you have it for a little bit before we make a change, but I think there's a couple of things that just stand out now. You know, some things are preference, some things aren't. So just the the certain things. Like if I wanted to at this point, I would say let's try and like throw in uh, trap tricks for uh, the whalings. But I'm not against testing them to see if they're worth playing in the long run. So we'll put something else in the side deck in a minute. The other thing is uh, these tour guides. Why are they here? They. There are certain times where it is almost more be beneficial for me to get out two monsters on board. And Tour Guide is just a quick and easy way to get to some of your other Unchained monsters. If I find that I end up bricking a little more in games, uh, game one, like if I draw more traps and more kind of ways to stop my opponent but not start my own plays... I'll side in uh, some tour guides so that I can kind of get into some of my unplayed, un unchained plays a little quicker. Okay, uh, so I get that. So if we think about it, we have three Aruha, three uh, Sarama, and three Reika, and the three Prisons, which means we have like 12 like monsters to start the game. Tour guide can get any one of them, but all their effects are negated. I don't know how much that matters, because it doesn't look like there's like a link monster you're really making with those that you would really want to to do with that like you can't make the unchained soul of rage without using an unchained soul and all the little unchains are unchained twins so like you can't even make those with them mm -hmm. so i'm not sure how much tour guide would help for that but i understand if you feel that there's a weakness in the deck in terms of getting to a monster i think the extra should help with fixing that a little bit at the very least okay. 
or we can maybe look for some alternate play line that might destroy our the whaling or one of our other cards to try and get us access to those earlier. I think the X-Trap should help plenty enough, actually. Hopefully, we'll see. I don't think Gamma is normally played in this list. I'm not saying it's awful to play in the list. I just don't think I've seen it that often. Okay. Um, so most of these things seem fine. I feel like if we're going to play Gamma, it would be kind of nice to play an Omega, but I'm not sure it's worth it, considering you have no other uses for tuners in here. Mm -hmm. Although you do play Valor on the side, which could be ac useful for like the Selene combo. But again, if you're not playing a access code, that may or may not make sense. All right, just thinking if there's anything else we should change before we get into it. Uh, I think the artifact package is pretty common in this kind of uh, deck. Uh, really? Thoughts on the artifact package? It's fun. Every time I've played it in like a, an in-person deck, I've just, for whatever reason, I've never drawn into it. So like when I build uh, EDO decks, it's to test it before I get in person. As you and should. It's just, As you should. Just weird luck. Because the Sanctums I know have a little bit more synergy in like unchanged just because you can use the Rakea to pop those so you could pop a card on your opponent's field. I'm not sure you can summon the Scythe though if that happens, right? You gotta look at the text of Scythe. If this card is destroyed and sent to the Grave Special it, but I think Rakea would lock you into Fiends if you use her effect, right? Yes, Fiends. Okay, so just looking for some synergies. Mm -hmm. Alright, well we opened two slots in the side deck. Uh, let's throw two cards in and then we'll play a few games and we'll try and talk about technical play and then at the end maybe we'll make some other modifications to the main deck. Right. What else do you have that you would play in the side that we uh, could fit in here? Trap Trick would be a wonderful idea. All right. I guess we don't know if we're going first, so this could be a dead card if we don't know if we're going first. So it's not like the worst idea to put it in the side deck for ensuring we have access to it. Mm -hmm. uh, going first game two if we lose game one, uh, assuming we want to go first. I guess we'll go with that and we'll see uh, if we need to make any changes later. I have found in the few times I've been recording these, by the way, this is the third episode being recorded, everyone. Two others have been recorded. Neither have been posted yet. And you're going to find a common problem is going to be when we're talking through the side decking, our opponent will just get restless. So they might leave. So we might have some trouble actually getting to side decking. Okay. Just a heads up. All right. So most things here seem pretty normal. I'm not sure. The unicorns are all at three because they're fiends we can go into using Unchained Soul, right? Mm-hmm. Okay, so uh, we'll see if there need to be any other adjustments. Personally, I'm a huge fan of, like, what do you call it? Underworld Goddess of the Closed World with IP Mascarena, because that's at least a fiend you can summon. I know it's not dark, so you can't make it with uh, uh, Soul of Rage, but if you were making it with IP, it's essentially using their monster anyway. That'd be something cool to consider. The, the ruling I had heard, at least when Underworld Goddess was first released, was that you couldn't IP Mascarena into her. But if that's not true, I do want to run that. It is not true. Uh, what card would you like to cut for it? We probably don't need two Unchained Abomination. Okay. Let's throw that in. Underworld Goddess. So the, there's a ruling with Underworld with IP Mascarena that says if you were to go into micro, if you were to go into a, a code talker using micro coder, you can do it from your hand. Meaning that despite that IP says using monsters on your field, the effect of the micro coder in your hand can be used for the link summon of the effective IP Mascarena, which implies that it can also be done on Underworld Goddess of the Closed World, which there is a Q&A question for in the official uh, OCG database, where that question is asked and it immediately references, goes straight to the microcoder effect. So I can understand why it would sound like you can't do that, but you can do that, which is kind of nice. Good to know. All right, so let's run with this and we'll see if we should make any changes based on things that happen. Um, and we're just going to make sure you're making sensible plays with what is occurring. All right, so let's get into some games. All right, so we are on EU competitive because there's no way else to get a game that isn't like a complete joke on YGO Pro. Also, we have pre-release cards on, so we might play against OCG cards or unreleased cards because if I restrict the games, we might not be able to get a game at all. All right, well, our opponent has elected to go first. We opened uh, the combo, Driver Gamma, of course, the best way to draw it with the Extrav. Um, all right. So this will let them get to a particular starter. So uh, we could Gamma this and keep them off of something. Um, That's what I was thinking. Yeah, because they might not be able to get a monster, but if at this point they've normal summoned. So if they get a Keras, they might just be able to... Uh, if they have a Keras, they might be able to play a little bit anyway. But by stopping the Nerval from getting to the Fractal, we keep them off of getting enough names for a uh, Revolt to be useful. So stopping this might be good. They might actually waste an Ash to stop this. 
Although it is unfortunate going two for one, losing the driver at this point. Yeah. Okay. And we also lost our bait for Ash with the X-Drav, which I guess we'll start off with. Mm -hmm. And we'll see how bad this goes. We only have one Abomination, so that could go poorly. All right. Let's see. So it looks like no, we have one of a lot of stuff left, and we lost two of the boss monsters. All right, so uh, given the current hand, what would you want to do? Normally, I would prisons first. And adding... With Rakia, we could add any spell or trap to set it and then use Rakia to pop it, go into Sarama and continue. Or we can also go Aruha to normal Rakia, pop it, and continue. But I would say add Escape of the Unchained. All right. Here. So I guess that's the one we want to have access to in the graveyard with Sarama the most? Mm-hmm. All right, so normal uh, and set? Yes. So we can attack and do the pop in the battle phase? if Unless you could think of a reason to do it earlier. Uh, there's no reason to do it earlier. All right, well, the I can think of a reason. They can't gamma us currently. Oh. Um, should we okay. summon something now? I would say yes. All right. So if we get Sarama now, it can then set the uh, the the escape and then pop the Reikia. All right. So we found out some information early. Okay. And I guess we yeah. just run this over. It's nice to force out plays before you go to the battle phase so you can make more decisions before doing that. Mm -hmm. So I guess we're just going to set two and pass. Yes. I'm not sure I agree with us playing this Avarice. I think it's going to be the discard for our uh, Abominable Unchained Soul, but I'm I'm down to try it. Okay. It's better in decks where you can just like link into ten zoo monsters. Oh, like this guy's gonna. Um. Oof. Well, if that's his normal we... summon, he might not have a play. We could just pop yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, with this game. Yeah. Yes. Um. So that will uh, negate a targeting effect. We could still destroy it later. Mm -hmm. um, I would say hold off for now. All right. We don't really want to let him make all the zoos, though, because if he does, uh, we're still also in the correct timing for Torrential. My my thinking was we, as soon as he gets to Borbo, we drop the Torrential. That's. I mean, he, he's still not going to be able to get to Borbo anyway. The problem is if you let him get to Borbo, he'll have mm -hmm. enough monsters to make a potentially useful... Uh, revolt. Like, currently he'll have two. What's he going to oh. revolt into? Nothing, right? I forgot revolt wasn't locked into Tribrades and Grave. Yes. Yeah. Uh, torrential. Okay. So, that's good that we did this at the timing on summon, meaning we still had that option. So now we, we could run into a Gamma here, but they didn't do it before. Um, what would be the best one? Is there, like, a best one to just sit on our board with nothing else going on? I feel like so, it's the Sarama. Yes. Uh, it's always one of the Unchained Twins because they float. Well, the dog would be good if we really had no, like, anticipation that they were going to do anything else. But mm -hmm. not without, like, something else to work with. Well, um, I guess we're drawing... Should we draw two? Or we can we can draw one card. I like to sometimes change it up for the first one, but running really low on, like, certain cards. I would go draw one here. Yeah, we don't want to, like, be stuck with a card that doesn't do anything. Mm -hmm. And I guess we'll see what's left in a second. Are they really going to ash that? So uh, we lost the, the rage, which is important. Um, but we still have a lot of other things. Uh, let's see. So uh, how would you play this out? I would go Sarama effect targeting um, escape. They are making this very difficult to end the game. Mm -mm. All right. So I guess we're just attacking. Yes. All right. So there are a lot of ways to OTK with this deck out of nowhere by just popping your own cards. Have you ever like used your Abominable Unchained Soul to pop your own monsters? Yes. Okay. Because I played against a guy yesterday at Locals and he was not fully aware you can do that. That or he thought my back row was so scary even though I hadn't activated for three turns and it sat there and it was nothing. Same play, I guess? Same play. Alright. Let's 
So Rekia, I guess. Um, yes. Because if we Rekia, we can attack with both for three thousand, and then use Rekia to pop the Sarama to try and get in for game. Yes. Because uh, what can their back row really be that like does anything? And they haven't activated it. There hasn't been much of a pause for them to activate it yet. So. I don't like to base our choices on that. We should try and play as if it's not giving us the information. But um, That's very fair. Otherwise, you know, we're setting ourselves up for uh, some false information in the future. So now we have to go for a big guy. Mm -hmm. So it's weird. They don't activate when they pop themselves, right? Yeah. Strike. Well, that'll do the same thing, right? It should. And they're mm -hmm. dead now. We can summon smaller guys. Literally anything. Okay. Cool. So reverse Tri Brigade. Any thoughts on cards that should come in? I do agree Pot of Avarice in there was kind of a dead card the entire game. We drew it early. Let's cut it for now just mm. to see. Uh, what else would you put in for this matchup? Going, We're going second. Tri Brigade Zoo. Dimensional Barrier, while well, good at first, is probably not the best idea because if we call Xyz, they just start link plays. That's true. Let's focus on what will be useful rather than the mm -hmm. things that aren't useful. Like, I would put in the Imperm. Always. Because all the uh, tri brigades are heavily affected by monster effect negation. So I'd like to put in the Veilers. I just don't know where we'll find um, where we can cut things. We can cut one Wailing for uh, the Called by the Grave. Because I believe Tri Brigade will target their banished targets before they actually banish. They do as not. Cost. They um, don't. They do not. So oh. I'd say we're better off with a Veiler. I think the the Panker Tops can be good for just like forcing out the trap card before they have to commit to a play. Uh, side out the one dog for one pank. Yeah. Uh, that should be okay, I think. Although that tells us a potential side deck flaw in our deck. If we can't get in all the Veilers in the matchup it's good for, we might not even want to side three Veilers. That is a very good point. Well, they made us oh, go first. first. What do you think? So normally in a situation like this, I would set Sarama and set Torrential and pass. Is there a Because Torrential will just pop it. They don't need to know what monster this is. Mm -hmm. There are a lot of cards it that only work on face-up monsters also. Mm -hmm. It also could make it look like we're holding a Lightning Storm and we're trying to keep our cards from being dead. Because if we have our face-up card, we can't Lightning Storm. Ooh, a Kaiju. Well, um, well, if we Torrential, this might end their turn. Uh, I would say go for it. Yeah, again, if we keep them off of having enough zoo, enough Beast Warriors, then the Trap card is a dead card. Mm-hmm. So, again, if we keep them off of Tri Brigades, they might not be able to play. I, I would ash this. The unfortunate thing is the monster in our graveyard is also a Sarama, so our Sarama doesn't really do anything. Mm -hmm. If we top deck a Abomination's Prison or an Aruha, we can have a couple more plays by, you know, Aruha popping Sarama and going into things. And then if we get to Abominable... Oh. All right. Um, yeah, so I would normal summon Sarama and then pop it with Aruha. All right. So if they strike this, would he activate in the graveyard? Does he have to be destroyed from the field? He destroyed in general, so he would still be able to activate there. So Rakia? Yes. All right. And then battle phase is what I would where I would go. Okay. And the question is, is it possible to OTK with just two two names on board with the Rakia available? So we could. We would have to Rakia pop Aruha and then Aruha, Aruha summon Soul. Summon. And Soul pop Rakia for anything at that point. Or well, no, that would we would have to No. Um That'd be short a little, but I mean we do want to get to the Sarama, right? Yes. Um, well, we also used the Sarama already. Maybe maybe we should still try and pop the back row in case it's productive. And Gam and Driver in Grave is still alive for Gamma, so... That's true, but we also might want to just save our uh, Reikia to pop the Aruha to summon it on the on next turn opponent. to stop mm -hmm. their play from happening. So we might want to pass here. That would, that would be a pretty good call. So I would say 50-50 on pushing farther. 
-hmm. I mean, this is good for us. We just pop the Aruha now. Yes. And then we activate afterwards. So they could have another evenly, but they would have to use it. I guess they'd wait for this. Uh, we can Sarama and then yes. try and set something. We can Sarama. Then we can set Aruha and pop uh, Rakea. Oh, it went to our end oh. phase? That's oh, weird. yeah. Hmm. Is that a glitch? Yeah, no, that should have put us back in uh, at least the battle phase. Um. Well, yeah, that was at the end of the battle phase. I didn't press... I, I can't go to the end phase from there. Maybe I should have pressed main phase too in case. So that was odd. This is also our last Sarama, so it's kind of a problematic. All right, so Rat... I mean, if they're they're using their high normal summon reliant cards, so if we like just deal with this, the game could end. I would um, say Rakea to pop Sarama for uh, ab un unchain the Bombo Soul. Driver to pop. So we've been through three Sarama, which is a little unfortunate. Mm -hmm. All right, so he has to have another... I mean, we can lose this game, which is unfortunate. That's just how good their deck is. They have to have one more Beast Warrior in hand. But we can't plan for that, because if they did it, we were going to we were to be forced to do the play anyway. Mm -hmm. Oh, and they don't have it. Interesting. I would like to draw two cards, please. Yes. I mean, if they show that such as Imperial Order, that's not good for them. Could it be a revolt? Um, at this point, if it was, the question becomes... Uh, they do have four, so we... Do, well, they have more than four now. So if it is, it's useful, at least, for a change. All right, well... Hmm. I guess we just have to go for the battle phase? Yes. All right. Yeah, that could be problematic. Uh -huh. So, um, there is a play to do. Uh, do you have any thoughts on what to do here? Rakia pop a, a bomb wall and shade soul so it specials itself back during the end phase. Yeah, that is a play. I don't know how useful it is uh, in this particular case. I think we might be dead. Just their their deck just brings game out of nowhere. Um, but that is the play. Uh, are you okay with doing that play? Yes. All right. Because then when it's special summon during the end phase, we can discard Xtrav to pop. I don't necessarily like discarding Xtrav, but... Well, we might uh, not need we... to pop, but that's also an option. We don't have to. True. The problem is it's, their, it's our end phase, so there's limited things we can do. They're also just going to be really set for next turn. We might not be able to do anything. Because I like hear they have no, they have one choice. They're going to banish Rekia, and there's no reason for them to not do that. Mm -hmm. uh, they have nothing in the banished zone, so their their Shurig can't actually do anything with searches. They're going to search one from the Nerval, and they, uh, okay. So there is a way we win if we save the Ash and they use the Fractal effect, and we just negate the Fractal, then we win the game because they won't have anything. But um, if they just summon it and start making plays, they might win the game. So I guess we have to assume that they'll make the bad play, right? Oh, yeah. Best, best thing we can do. All right. So we bring back Abominable. Pop that guy. Yes. And we hope they play bad. So, yeah, it's always funny when they don't leave anything banished for, for Omen, when they have the option to do so. I guess they never got anything banished. Well... Okay, now we're in a good spot again if they use the Fractal, but there's no reason for them to do that. But they might. All right, so he didn't he didn't do the bad play. Oh, he's got one in hand. Interesting. Didn't see that coming. This should be game, and I don't think we could have played it any differently, which is good. It's good if we're playing to a point where we it didn't matter what we did, because then we didn't play it badly.
that's what I think the fun thing about Tribrian Zodiac is, is that they can they can pull off some pretty crazy things. Yeah, the zoo engines got a lot worse with the new ban list. Mm -hmm. I opponent at locals yesterday. He just normal summoned Thoroughblade and then trip made check a nine, and he thought he can detach to summon. Uh, there needs to be at least a monster in the graveyard to activate the effect of check a nine. Mm -hmm. All right, so fifty three two thousand to sixteen. So that is game on board. So uh, and uh, we. Wouldn't have been able to do anything even if we had uh, soul, so I guess we'll just concede and uh, go to the next game. All right, they made us go first, um, so we can choose now. Thoughts on what to do? So if they're wanting to go second, well, they had evenly matched in, which oh, is odd. Yeah. That's not normal, but um, we could choose to go second and let them play into that. But can we out the board if they make the board properly? That's that's kind of what I'm debating right now. Um, it's it, it's it's the the way I'm looking at it is that if we open enough hand traps, we can stop them from getting to the board. But that's a big if. Um, uh, I think we should go second. But uh, mm -hmm. the question is, we, what else should we bring in for that? Um, I think maybe we can bring in the called by because we can. Uh, if they set up the right like. Guys in the graveyard called buying on one of their guys could be useful. Mm -hmm. um, otherwise, the veilers would be useful, and then we just have to find something worth cutting. I do. We... Part of me is thinking we add in a trap trick just for a little bit more trap consistency, and then we cut the side frame package. I can be on board with cutting the side. Mm. I'm on board with cutting the side frame package just because it takes up so many slots, but I don't think a trap trick is going to make anything any better here. Mm -hmm. um, I think maybe the third abominable could be helpful. Okay. Like, it could come out and, like, kill the uh, access code talker on res. Yes. Um, Like, these cards, they're, they're kind of iffy, and we opened it earlier. I'm not saying that should justify taking it out. Mm -hmm. um, but if we're going to purposely go second, which is the plan... Um, well, this is a pretty good hand for going second. Ooh. It just, it feels yeah. like a real downhill struggle with this matchup, where we're purposely trying to keep them from ever getting enough Beast and Beast Warriors for them to eventually have enough to where none of that mattered. So, like, they keep trying the same play. <laughs> and they're going to see if they can do anything. All right, it, it's been working. Okay. Yeah. Extra have. All right. Um. Oh, well, we lost Underworld Goddess Ooh. and a bunch of one of. So this is pretty good. But mm. this by itself doesn't do anything, right? No. All right. So um, like, what do you think? We. I'm thinking. You know, obviously set Imperm in the. Actually, we know that could be an evenly matched. Well, we so, already do everything in main phase too. Mm hmm Yeah, I'm thinking Sarama attack. I agree. That was always the play. Then the, the question becomes, um, how many cards to set? I think at this point we probably... We could justify setting all three of the cards. Mm hmm um, But we might want to hold on to one to pitch. like the Because the Torrential is going to trigger our uh, Sarama for us. Yes. And the... Because right now, minimum, we can banish a Fractal off of Called By, so how useful would that be in a follow-up play here? Well, I mean, if they have Keras and they pitch something useful, or they normal summon a guy and go into Almirage, that could be very useful. So I mm -hmm. think setting is fine. Yeah, so I, I think Imperm in the middle column, obviously, and then set the other two and see how they handle it. I mean, we, we lose to Lightning Storm. They mm -hmm. went first. There's a chance that they have it, but I mean, I don't know what they decided to do. That's becoming incredibly annoying. <laughs> that is 
honestly kind of funny how much that will phase god damn it oh um, yeah i would say go ahead and part of me wants to go ahead and call by the uh fractal just in case or i guess we, we could chain that to if this is an even like yeah we're just gonna save the torrential i think mm -hmm. um assuming it is i think it is all right so your fractals no longer work so just so you know duelist um, so it's either Imperm or Torrential. We could draw into a play. Torrential's not really a play currently. I mean, um, I think we hold the Imperm. I I think Imperm or Torrential, if they start popping off in main phase two, then Torrential could be useful, but also a, a well-timed Imperm can really hurt some decks. Well, if they're play if they have the um, the cards that are actually productive, they need to be destroyed anyway, or go to the graveyard. So at least we now have that column taken again. Let's draw Extra more cards. From, yeah, are we going one or two? That is the question. We haven't lost anything yet. That doesn't mean we should risk everything, but I feel like we don't have the cards to play. We kind of have to. We we do need to go for two. All right, that's good. That is very good. All right, what is the line? So we can set Abominable Chamber and then use Rakea to pop it. And then, of course, we can, on Destruction, use Abominable to special itself and pop the back row. All right, so we'll chain block the, uh, the, the trap card. Mm-hmm. Um, now we can we can get Sarama and use it to set a bombable chamber again and then pop Rakea to get out something else. Um do we have anything in our graveyard? I gotta take a look again. All we have is a Sarama in graveyard, so our Sarama doesn't really do that much here. Um be able to get the dog high enough. Uh then either Aruha or Sarama. Yeah, um, um I don't think it really matters so much. Not particularly. Let's go Aruha. Well, the Sarama can set the trap and pop this just to thin mm. the deck a little. But do we really want oh, to have good. no monster draws? I think we're fine getting for the Sarama. Mm -hmm. It hasn't been activated this turn, so if they pop it, it's fine. Just where we're going to be popping the uh, the setback row, I guess. Yes. In the event they keep setting uh, evenly matches. Oh, that was dead. Okay. Well. All right, I guess we're just attacking and hoping they don't have evenly matched in hand. Uh, yes. Is there a... Uh, if they set a nerve all, that would mean we don't do game. I and mean, we don't do game anyway, I think, no matter what happens mm -hmm. here. So we might as well do less damage and ensure we kill the monster. Yes. That could be Ash. That could be a zoo. That guy would have blocked either one of these attacks. So okay. we got maximum damage in. Do they really have another evenly matched? Please don't have another evenly matched. I would be... Okay. So... We... Huh. Mm -hmm. uh, well, the question is, we can set this. The summons one from Grave, right? Yes. So, we don't have a card in hand. Because mm -hmm. um, we can make a uh, Rage and mess up their one normal summon if they have one. We rage could... is a special summon. Huh? Rage Rage is a special summon, not a normal summon. Uh, I meant, we. oh, they. we have to use their special summon monster? Yes. Okay, because we can link into Rage, then use Sarama to pop Rage and set the trap card, and then add the soul back to hand. But then we'd only have one card in hand, right? We wouldn't have any cards in hand. Yeah. All right, um... so we need a card in hand, right? So I guess it makes more sense to... Um. What gives us a card in hand? We... Is there a way for us to get a card in hand? Because uh, this summons one from Grave, right? There, There's not a way this turn to get a card in hand, but All right, we so would need to... We could put yes. this in Grave by linking it off, and then we can pop the... 
with into rage then we can use rage to add a card to our hand and then we can use the uh chamber to summon the soul from grave right yes so let's go for that we need to set the chamber oh yeah Sarama. yeah we're gonna set chamber here and we're gonna pop the this guy mm -hmm. and then use this guy to add this to our hand yes so now we have imperm if they have like an activated effect and we can just oh i didn't meant to pick up something else oops the point was to summon that from the graveyard. Isn't it, can this summon from hand? Yes. But now we don't have a card in our hand. Gosh darn it, I messed up. <laughs> well, bad. they are on uh, two cards in hand, so... Yeah, we're not in the worst position, but uh, it still could have mm -hmm. been done better. Okay. Wow. Duster? Um, that's, They're dead if, if they duster, right? That Well, that helps, because I can special summon another one from deck. Well, do we need one from the deck, or can we just fish one we want out of the graveyard? Does it really matter? Either, Really, either could work. It doesn't matter. Okay. Um, um, well, doesn't really matter. This is just the more powerful card, I guess. Mm -hmm. We just put everything on board so they can, you know, give up. All right. That was a good first game. Uh, first match, right? That was match one? Mm-hmm. All right, so let's go to a second match, see if there's any other technical play choices we should be making. Uh, did you feel like you learned anything from these games? Yes. <laughs> any particular things um, that stand out? Because I'm just trying to see if I've been helpful. I Normally when I see Xtrav, I always go for six. But um, in game one, it was a significantly better choice to uh, go for six and then three. Uh, of course... It's not important whether or not we go for three or for six. We go for six when we're trying to gain advantage. We went for three because we don't want a dead card in our hand, and we value what was in our extra deck over the cards we could potentially draw. It shouldn't be as simple as, I should do six and then do three, and then do six later if it's desperate, or three if not. You have to make a decision based on what's happening. In that case, we didn't really need anything else. We drew one card because we just needed to draw new cards. There was no point in holding on to an extravagance and not activating it at all, so using it for one card was at least turning it into something. Although it still may have even been correct to use six cards and get into uh, potentially more options. A lot of the side decking choices, uh, I almost never side out the side frame package. Uh, siding out the side frame package is relevant in some matchups if it's not particularly useful. Going second, it can be helpful for us resolving our Abominations Prison or our Pot of Extravagance, but... That doesn't mean it was correct to take out. I was just trying to make sure we fit into things we felt were more useful. Um, but that doesn't necessarily mean it was a correct choice, and it's not always going to be. Everything is dependent on the matchup. It depends on what needs to come in and what needs to come out. Your side deck should really be built in order to be prepared for every possible outcome of every match that could possibly be played. And you need to know what comes in and what comes out of each matchup. And we didn't build the side deck to do that, so we had to make some odd decisions. And I don't necessarily agree with even doing that. But looking at uh, what's in the side deck and uh, what we needed for the uh, matchup. Yeah, um, sometimes you're playing main deck cards like Gamma because it's just generally good, but maybe it's not as good as something else you have in your side deck. Mm -hmm. um, one of the things that you really got to think about when you're building your deck is what am I going to side out and in for every standard matchup in the format? And uh, if the answer, if you can do that and you find that there are cards that never come out or always come out, sometimes it's a bit better to change it to what's more more likely and just not have those uh, inconsistencies where you have three veilers and you can't even put in three veilers so what's the point all right yes. uh, let's get another match and see if something else comes up that's another thing i do want to make sure that the veilers can be better utilized um well depending on the f they're going to be better when the flunderies come out i think they're supposed to be good against them they're good against uh sword soul sword souls are going to be a very powerful deck i also like valor if you're playing like the selene combo but i don't think it really works in this deck like this deck doesn't play prosperity probably because partially budget reason i would imagine but also uh mm -hmm. it's better to get more cards in this deck than it is to get a specific card i know a lot of unchained people are kind of arguing between prosperity and extrav i did choose extrav for budgetary reasons um, but I do think just pure card advantage, having more cards is better than having a specific card. 
Also, you're not playing like a blowout card like Scythe, which would make make a difference. Uh, we're going first. Yes. Okay. Okay, this is like the best use for for this one to just set mm -hmm. it and get it out of the way. Yes. All right. A Ruha pop. Mm -hmm. A preference. Uh, uh, well, I we... wouldn't activate Soul just yet. Okay, unless we we could use it the chain block here, but there's no reason to assume that that's a problem. Mm -hmm. Um, Sarama. Yes. Oh, this might have been a misplay. Um, I don't know if you agree. Uh, maybe it would have made more sense to pop Abominable first, so that we can make sure it was set at the end of the turn. Yeah, that's a very good point. We can still... Uh, we can't go to the main phase too, so we can still set it and the Torrential, and then use Saramba to set Wailing and pop Aruha. Alright, we can still do that. Um, so that when we pop Aruha, we can get out um rock rakea so that way we have a quick effect pop on our opponent's turn we can actually um is there a reason to put this face up not really right not until we get rage on the field which lets us link summon on their turn well then we would have had to commit to the link summon already which mm -hmm. i guess we're not so i guess we're can we get a card in our hand here to make not this life? From, not from here. Okay, so I guess we're just going to hold the cards we have, or we could set Torrential and then summon another soul and then use this soul to pitch for the other soul? We could do that, yes. Okay. So I'm not sure that that turn was played out 100% appropriately, because we have a Wailing with no, no real purpose. Other than that, if they pop it, we get an extra monster, but they shouldn't pop it. It would be weird if they did. <laughs> but there's a lot of cool things you can do when it comes to like chain blocking your unchains from one another with the soul because it like prevents the ashes on stuff um, <laughs> and it can it can chain block two of them because you can chain block one when it's trying to summon itself and you can chain block one when it's trying to pop a card yes the I don't always chain block with it, which I don't know why. It's oh, phenomenal. If discarding a card or summoning a monster isn't doing anything at a moment matters. Um, okay, discard a, during your main phase, discard a fable monster and special discard. I don't think that matters. No. So that one summons itself. No, we would we will hold this. Well, fable? now they have access to like. Uh, synchro plays. I don't know what. I know Fabled Unicorn's a card. We have less cards in hand, so. Um, With Fabled, I normally wait until the first extra deck monster comes out. You don't want to let them make one though. It could have like a good effect. Hey, like here, um, Fabled Unicorn. I've never touched it in all my time playing Fabled. Uh, and then Halka Fibrex is the other option. Um. Well, but what's it? Hmm. Hmm. On resolution of this, we should probably torrential actually. Yeah, it's going to be enough value to justify that, I think. Oh, actually, wait until the Ganasha special summons itself. Good thing it's mandatory. Mm -hmm. Everybody dies. Yes. Then. I don't. Uh, uh, well, they they had a uh, uh, crisis of conscience and couldn't play without all their monsters. So uh, I guess that's that. Um, what what would you have summoned here? Because there we had two options. I think that makes sense. Uh, like we could probably put out the dog here, and like one other guy. The the dog would have been nice. And then honestly, I might have gone. For, we could have taken... Because when the dog and, dies, what does it do? Is it a special one from Grave? Yes. Okay. Um, we well, also, maybe we should summon two... Well, we would have to summon probably another Reikia to pop whichever, uh, I guess, a Sarama. So the Sarama can die, uh, can summon from the deck a soul. So we can su use the soul and discard the other soul. Mm -hmm. All right. Yeah. Okay. 
Let's uh, with, try and get one more match. <laughs> uh, do you have something older, you want to say? Oh, with older decks like um like the dual dual terminal decks, um I, I find that they really need a crazy opening hand to really start popping off. Um, so this is at least the way I'm looking at it, more of an outlier match. Like we would probably see this at locals. Um, so like in this kind of deck, we could have probably waited a long time before firing off torrential because they aren't going to set up like protection beforehand. We definitely could have waited because usually the first thing, at least when I play it, the first thing that good, the first like big negate that they go into is either, um, Borlode Savage or Crystal Wing. Usually Crystal Wing because it doesn't require to put a Link Monster in Grave. And Crystal Wing is only a monster in a gate, so a Torrential Tribute uh, could have gotten rid of that pretty easily. Yeah, sometimes they surprise you with a weird Link play that we aren't familiar with, and then we, we mm -hmm. wait too long. So, you know, there is a balance between waiting long enough and waiting too long, and this is not the kind of deck where knowing choke points is normal. Um, so we really just want to make sure they don't have enough follow-up. None of these guys floated when they die. They'd be re relying on the cards in their hand. So I think we were fine the way we played it. Mm -hmm. All right, let's try and get one more match in. So yeah, Wailing was interesting. Uh, we still haven't been in a position where we actually made a Link Summon, where we would Link on their turn to use its mm -hmm. effect to pop something, because it seemed like a really mediocre card so far. I mean, you know, always down to test the weirder cards in the uh, deck lists. Sometimes they don't get enough experimentation. I guess we'll go first. Oh, the one instance where this is good. Um, so I guess we have to get what do we get here? This is like weird. We get we add a ruha and then set the other prison, pop it with a ruha. Okay, we can use each effect. That's relevant. Mm -hmm. Alright, so a ruha. I was concerned because we had duplicates. That's what I love about all the spells and traps, that you can use both effects on one turn. Now... Huh. Well, we're definitely using Prison. Mm -hmm. But there is a problem, because Sarama can't really set anything currently. But I guess we can sort of get there? We, we can at least put bodies on board, and we can set the Torrential... And then hold off on the unchained abominable abominable unchained soul. And then depending on what they do, we can still have uh potentially live gamma in hand. Alright. Uh so what are you thinking here? I'm thinking Rakea for the quick effect pop. Okay. And just set torrential and pass? Yes. All right, nothing wrong with that. Um, I wasn't sure if we should bother putting this, these in attack or defense position. There is always like a concern of putting the defense position monsters on the board with Zeus in a format. Mm -hmm. You just run into anything, and your monster doesn't die. Uh, that's going to be problematic. Um, oh, gosh. Is there literally anything we can do about that? As of right now, no. Um desperately trying to think of something productive to do like during the battle phase we might be able to torrench well we can rikea to pop a card and summon a card and then torrential that but, sounds like the plan to me but if this is full scrap combo then they're just gonna pop the torrential at some point so we might be forced to use it earlier mm-hmm Misk is a insane card. Yeah, I mean, I'm upset it's at one because I like dinosaurs. I want to play them, but uh, <laughs> it definitely deserves to be at one. Um, mm -hmm. Or other things could be at lower counts. Like if there was one pill and then the Archosaur would be a little less productive. Mm -hmm. Would also be interesting. I think a lot of people want purely Misk to get hit for dinosaur decks, but I think that there's other things to do for the deck other than just like ban or limit misc all right well they might set us up in a way where we can torrential other things now is this really mm -hmm. an orcus deck it could be i know orcus yeah there there is a version or two interesting 
Because they've normal summoned, right? No, they didn't normal summon. They popped the baby in there. So this is their... F uh, hmm. Because this is going to send a dinosaur. Yeah, it is an Orcus list. Interesting. Hmm. They haven't... Alright, so I think we should definitely try and pop that now. Agreed. Um, but the question is, do we do it with Torrential? Or we could use the Rakia to pop the Aruha. Oh, but then we I... don't really... We don't have a way to, like, guarantee a summon later, unless we get it on another Rakia. Mm -hmm. So I guess we should just pop these now and hope that this does anything. Yes. Um... I guess we summon out of the deck. And we have Gamma, which is actually live here. Mm -hmm. Alright, so we need another Rakia to guarantee a pop. And yes. then I guess a Sarama. Go ahead, yes. Get Rakia here and then use the Rakia to summon Sarama. All right, so we can still do dinosaur plays. He can make a token with the uh, Rosenix. I'm not sure if he's normal deficiently. Like, I think. Okay, they, they scooped, so odd win. Okay. We'll take odd. We take free wins. Um, so dinosaur, uh, thoughts? I, my first thought is to get called by in here in case we see the misc, but I think two one of mm -hmm. So that's a problem. Um. Although the call by could help if they... No, they wouldn't have it in hand. Um, I I do want to try to get as many effect veilers in there as possible. Might be helpful. Well, they left. Oh. Either way, let's let's go back to the deck list. All right, so uh, I'd say mostly these games went pretty well. Any thoughts on anything that came up that we probably could have done better from your perspective? I I think there was um, that one game when we set whaling. Uh, I told you to set whaling and then pop it. I I do agree that maybe setting abominable chamber the unchained and then popping it would have been uh, the better play, so that we at least have it uh, available later down the road. Yeah, um, it's nice to have a way to bring back our our soul. Where if it's in the graveyard, like we also like when I did that play earlier where I used soul. Uh, I'm sorry. Uh, Rage to add this back to hand. It literally could have been anything else, so that there was something to discard. So, like, there's some careful calculations that need to be made with where do you want your cards to end up in the graveyard, in the hand? Uh, what cards do you want set at the end of the turn? Like, there was something I didn't really talk about, and I wasn't really like I didn't put the thought into it as I should have in the end of that last game there, where we popped Aruha and Rikea, but the chain link order that matters too because they can't summon themselves. So, if we wanted to guarantee we have a Rikea on the field, then uh, because we need to trigger the uh, the soul, we have to chain block the, the Aruha to make sure the Rikea hits the board in case the Aruha gets negated when we try to bring the Sarama on the field. Because even though we don't really want Rikea to pop itself, because it can't trigger itself, and it's already been used that turn, at least it could pop itself so we could summon the soul in the battle phase and maybe pop Conductor or something. Mm -hmm. So like the chain blocking of these guys uh, matters for what you want on your end board. So it seems like that this is the kind of deck where you really have to be considering... What exactly do I want my board to be at the end of the turn or play to make the plays that'll get you to those uh, points? Yes. All right. Uh, mm. Anything else you could think of that came up that's worth discussing uh, or you think is this worth it? Because, like, again, it's not my deck, so I might not mm. have noticed something. Also, there are things you'll have noticed maybe from me talking or explaining or uh, suggesting that, to me, just seem, like, obvious, so I might not be able to point those out myself. I actually get ridiculously cautious when it comes to the link monsters hitting the field so um when you had summoned rage and then went to pop it to add something back to hand for the resource that is something i normally would not have even thought about um but getting that extra resource in hand is um a a, a very good idea because uh, especially if you have the ability to special summon uh, Abominable Unchained Soul, having that resource in hand for the extra pop um, just gives a little more uh, thought to do I really want to keep the Link Monster on field or do I want to 
get a resource in hand so I can pop something next turn. Yeah, those are options that are nice to know we have. If we want to get a card in hand, we can get a card in hand. There's a lot of decks that can't do that. But um, but it is weird that you have to like summon your soul and then like link it off, and then you have to pop the link monster, which... I mean, the, the reason I was more interested in doing that is specifically because they were going to normal summon first. Because um, it was the tri -brigade match, right? They were just going to normal summon something, and we couldn't respond at that point. So, we, like, it gives us, like, a worse response window. Not that the link monster that they summon couldn't be linked off, but it might be something that linking it off might not have been as effective. Yes. I do think these D barriers are going to be useful in the long run. Ever since uh, the new Master Roll hit, I have been a huge fan of D barrier. You know, with uh, Fusion, Synchro, and Xyz monsters not having to go towards uh, Link Arrows and extra monster zone, I I think, especially with Sword Souls coming out soon, we're going to hit a point where D-Barrier calling, like, Synchro or Fusion is going to be a really good option uh, for kind of stopping or slowing your opponent down. I agree, and I like it when, if we're going to play Trap Trick. We might even not need three of this, because, like, Trap Trick counts as the first and second copy of every card, so you can, like play a lot of things at two. I feel like, the, with the exception of like the Unchained cards, which you want to be able to pop, so they, you need to get to them. Like, I don't know if Wailing is going to be useful ever. Like, I didn't see it being productive. I've seen Wailing at Locals a couple of times come up, but in all honesty, I do agree that in the long run, looking at like every time I've played the deck, having it at one is probably just a better idea, and then just using it as pop fodder. All right, and I don't know about how I feel about this avarice uh if you're going through all your monsters that fast and not winning the game there is a chance you're playing it too aggressively at bad moments like if you're getting out enough monsters to actually activate it but also having run out of monsters in your deck to where you need to activate it that's not great and it's not like we run through like extra deck enough to get some free monsters in grave uh which would be kind of cool but i don't think you can really i most definitely do play this game or this deck very aggressively. All right. Um, I would like to take a look at somebody else's list just to see what the standard would be. Uh, mm -hmm. Like, I know the coder list. Have you looked at, like, a coder list? I I have. Uh, I do want to take another look at it since it's been a couple months. Yeah, I know he plays, like, two access code talkers, which I know it's kind of, like... And he also plays the Starlight Arujas, so it's a very expensive deck. I mean, you know, I don't care about rarity. I care about yeah. playable cards. And, you know, he's like, if you can have multiple access code talkers to ensure your extravagance doesn't banish them, it's probably worth doing. And I agree with that. Have you seen mm -hmm. there was a Spiral List way back that played like triple, they were $90 uh, Appaloosas at the time and triple Extravs and triple soul, Souls. It was Everything was at three because... They wanted to always be able to pot of greed. It only needed like two of their extra deck cards, so everything was at three. Good lord. Yeah, you know, and now all those cards are cheap, so the only it doesn't really matter. Well, not all the cards, but you know what I mean. That there's if you can fill your extra deck with three ofs that are important, it doesn't hurt, even if they're expensive, mm -hmm. if it's affordable, obviously. If you're playing online, you have a little bit more freedom, but I know we're we're real life players, so we've got a little bit of a realistic restrictions. Yeah. But I was if, hoping I was hoping for an access code reprint in the tin, so it would become a little more affordable, but... It'll be somewhere. Be. Who knows where, but it'll be somewhere. Mm-hmm. Because it didn't get banned. Like, there was a chance of that, um, which I wouldn't be completely against. I used to think Boral Sword should be banned, just because, like... But over time, they keep changing the way the game functions a little bit, just enough to where, like, the most broken card in the previous format's not that broken anymore. So they're pretty good at like just changing what the general direction of like the cards in the game do, which makes certain cards less good. But access code is pretty solid no matter what. Just being, if it, if it said two plus monsters, if it said three plus monsters at any point, it would have probably been unbannable at any point. But now that it says well, uh, two plus monsters, it's too easy to make. Either way, um, I don't know how much does Borlo, the Zero Boros, or Boral Sword come up, and into what degrees. Uh, so I don't know. If there's some adjustments that can be made in the extra deck without going into access code. Um, I I may take a look at swapping out a bore load for one of the uh, uh, abominable, unchained abominations. Zero Boros comes up a lot more often, uh, I think, than some of the other Link 4s. I love Zero Boros. Um, He's like one of my favorites. And especially with running Extrav... Uh, if I don't hit Zeroboros after the Extrav, and I go into it, that's a free 1,200 attack gain, not including anything my opponent may have done. 
it's just a big monster and then you know in the right extra monster zone um my opponent essentially has three zones to special summon to uh lest they want to banish everything yeah, it's always funny when they just can't make a decision. But I mean, I, I actually like Zeroboros the way it used to work when they had the wrong text on it, where it would come back during your own standby phase, not during the next standby phase. Or when does it say? Next turn. It was better before. It got a little worse now because it's so much harder to protect <laughs> during your opponent's turn. So you could like trigger it during your opponent's turn if you needed to, but you could also use it on your turn and make sure it was safe and then kill them with it on the next turn. Either way. All right. I think we kind of... Uh, covered most things unless you have any questions of something that didn't come up just ideas you weren't sure about were there any other cards you weren't playing it's because you didn't know about, about a ruling like the 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 underworld goddess the underworld goddess is actually the biggest one um knowing that you can ip into it on your opponent's turn um really makes me want to uh like start playing it more um because that was kind of like my biggest hesitation because i i like ip mascarena and being able to go on your opponent's turn versus Underworld Goddess on your turn, but using one of your opponent's monsters. I think just the way that they can interact together and disrupt your opponent is going to be a lot of fun to play around with. All right. Um, I use it mostly exclusively to deal with the arrival at Ignister. And uh, mm. you can do it off of one tour guide in a BA deck. Like tour guide summons Graf, go into Cherubini. Graf would mm. summon, Seer, uh, would summon like Skarm or something and then... You can use the Cherubina to send the Seer to bring back the Graph, and then you have a link to two monsters, and you can use any monster your opponent controls uh, to make it. So that's what I've always been doing with it. But you can you can kind of do that with like IP through through the to, through a good sequence of monsters. Fortunately, none of the Unchained seem to lock you into Darks. They do only lock you into Fiends, and fortunately, this card is a Fiend. Mm -hmm. um, I had some problems because I played an Orcus list. An Orcus, B, uh, BA, Orcus, um, Shadal, Mech Knight, Crazy List, and every once in a while I forget. Damn, this card's light. That's annoying. Um, yeah. But you could definitely use it in here. Uh, no reason why I wouldn't be able to. It also makes a really hilariously huge access code talker. If you use it for an access code, you get that 6300 attack point uh, access oh. code. Done that once or twice. Oh no, 73. Mm -hmm. uh, it's funny. Anyways, so I think that's going to wrap this up. Everyone check out uh, Desperate Oak's YouTube channel. And uh, if you have any questions, comments on gameplay choices, suggestions for the deck list, you know, leave them in the comments below. And uh, we'll see you all next time. All right.